Hello and welcome to Form Force podcast. I'm Laura. As you know, in this podcast, we focus on the sport of indoor rowing. We cover topics ranging from health, training, injury prevention, and how technology can help us as athletes get better while staying healthy. We boil down complex science topics, bringing you the latest research from the field of rowing and technology. And we very, very often have some pretty cool guests. So join us today uh, for another episode of Form First Podcast, where I'm going to be having a fantastic guest, a rowing coach, Marco Bobo. He's going to be telling us uh, about his experience in training athletes, uh, his best practices in getting athletes to improve, and of course, sharing some fantastic tips on how to get our performance up while still training at home. So yeah, come along and uh, join me for the call. Thank you so much for kind of joining me today um, for for our podcast. And I was thinking, why don't we just start by you introducing yourself to our viewers and listeners? Okay, uh, so my name is Marco Bovo, and uh, I was born in Italy and and I learned to row and coach there. And uh, I've been living in the United States the past uh, 25 years. Um, I have about 30 years of experience coaching. I, le- I started coaching very young. It was a way for me to pay for college. And, uh, um, and then uh, um, I uh, coach pretty much at any level. Um, I even try to coach adaptive rowing, although, um, you know, I, uh, for me, it was kind of like uh, a, a thing where, oh, you're a rowing coach, uh, here an adaptive rower, can you teach him how to row? <laughs> and uh, uh, it was kind of like I had to learn, learn everything new about biomechanics because uh, what I knew wasn't working with <laughs> with that athlete. And so I, you know, I learned there that I need to <laughs> know more about uh, uh, adaptive rowers and, uh, you know, all the, what they imply for technique. So on top of that, you know, I, um, uh, you know, I I do um, have a little coaching business on the side, uh, I, uh, and uh, I do consulting for uh, rowers uh, that wanna to improve uh, their technique or wanna improve their performance. Uh, and um, um, generally speaking, I work mostly with uh, uh, high school rowers uh, uh, because. Uh, uh, I find working with uh, kids that are highly motivated, extremely rewarding. Yeah. And listen, they're a tough crowd, also definitely. You, you yeah. have to kind of you have to kind of grab them and hold them. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I was, uh, uh, but you also have a, a degree in uh, psychology. Uh, yeah, uh, I graduated in psychology in '95. Uh, um, from my university, University of Padua. Um, uh, my, uh, my course of study is uh, pretty spread out uh, because uh, I have uh, exams in clinical psychology, sports psychology, animal psychology, and, uh, but the, the, the specialization is in social psychology. And uh, I think uh, uh, that's uh, um, it's been a, an asset, uh, you know, for my career. Um, I think helps me a lot to work with athletes, uh, especially in a one-on-one situation. I, yeah. It helps a lot. Definitely, uh, like always thinking <laughs> about it. It's I mean, it is so easy to just view your athletes is is like you know, machines and like, 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 a, for, you know, for the, for the function that they perform and, and it's, 
and and often um, I always I always throw this um, this um, um, quote from Henry Ford uh, when he actually really started kind of implementing the assembly line and you know and for for car production um, and he was actually frustrated because what what he wanted was machines and he said why when I hire a person I get the whole person when all that I want is a pair of hands. Mm -hmm. And and so often, even in, in even in sport, I think we we tend to view our athletes as you know as like a a, a body or a pair of hands or a, a pair of hands and a pair of you know of legs, and and very very often we forget that what makes us human is our emotion, our um, you know exactly the fact that we are susceptible to emotions and and you know understanding human psychology and how to how to work uh, and 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 uh, and just 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 be more susceptible to it. I can totally imagine how this is a great benefit uh, for a coach. I, I feel like in my case, even if some of my athletes might not agree with me, uh, my problem is the opposite. Sometimes I'm too empathetic with the uh, athletes because uh, a coach must be a little bit of an asshole sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Meaning, uh, he, he, especially I, I exercise myself, so I know how hard it is. I know how painful it can be, and uh, uh, and sometimes uh, I tend to project that on the athlete and uh, say, you know, maybe I'm pushing him too hard, you know. And sometimes uh, you should forget about that and let the athlete judge of what is too hard and what is not. But uh, uh, I, I would say, generally speaking, yes, it's been definitely, um, uh, it allowed me to understand better the athletes. Uh, yeah, definitely. And let's face it, you know, uh, um, an empathetic coach is probably a little bit less, uh, I'm not trying to say that coaches could be dangerous, but sometimes they could be dangerous. You know, if you push a little bit too hard, it could be dangerous for the athlete. But I, I think, uh, a little bit more empathy is probably better than too little. So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, for 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 the safety of the athlete, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, as we're talking about um, about training and coaching, um, and and what I think what is really really important, um, it's always to uh, you know as they say as they say when you don't know where to start from, start from the beginning. And yeah. we always like to think, uh, you know, in, in, in our company and when we're building our things of like, what would be best for the beginners? What would be best from the start? Um, and having this methodology and the correct mindset and so to say the correct tools and skills and knowledge straight from the beginning. So my question to you is that what would you say as a coach is the most important thing for a beginner athlete let's say somebody that has almost never been on a rower, um, either on a rower or on a boat, um, what would be the most important thing for them to know and learn first before they they kind of go and try to do it for fitness and for performance? I think that technique is the, you know, the most important thing uh, um, at high level, you know, uh, you have uh, athletes that win or lose uh, races by tenth of a second, yeah. and uh, um, a lot of time, in my opinion, that happened because uh, uh, you know, especially rowing is like I would say ninety nine percent physiology. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people that win and lose with different techniques uh, or with the same technique. Uh, uh, but I feel like uh, if we really look into the efficiency, it's uh, a key uh, player in the, um, in the uh, result of the athletes. There are athletes, and I, I, since I have experience with Italians, I always use Italian athletes uh, uh, comparing uh, to uh, um, uh, the rest of the world. Um, uh, especially in the Anglo-Saxon world, uh, uh, we have a lot of gifted athletes, uh, which is not a common thing in Italy. I feel like uh, uh, whatever allowed Italians rowers to be 
up top with the best is uh, a, a superior uh, application of the rowing technique and uh, um, and that's uh, allow us uh, to achieve results that many more talented uh, athletes uh, were not able to achieve and um, so uh, comparing numbers uh, um, you know I, I've been here in the United States for the past 25 years and uh, uh, you see um, uh, how easy it is to find a talented athlete here. Uh, in what I found in uh, the 20 years I spent in Italy, uh, wasn't really uh, as a coach, uh, it wasn't really a, a nearly what I can find in a small area of United States. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, the scale, is, the scale is very, very different. Yeah, yeah, and uh, um, and also because uh, uh, a good, uh, proper technique allow you not to get injured. That is the first uh, uh, thing in uh, uh, any sport, in my opinion. Because yeah, there's great so athletes uh, that yeah. never achieve anything because of stupid injuries. You know, and uh, uh, I feel like. Uh, especially if we are talking about uh, somebody that is new to the sport of rowing a lot of uh, rowing is becoming extremely popular here in the united states and more and more people are approaching the sport later in life and some of these people never actually exercise in their life uh, or not seriously and uh, if uh, they learn with uh, uh, improper technique, uh, it's going to definitely get into uh, serious injuries. Definitely. on, on one Because if you think about it, on one side, uh, rowing is so often recommended by doctors and, um, you know, uh, and they say physiotherapists and so on for people that have never rowed, especially on an ERG, uh, because it's so much easier on hip joints and knees in comparison to running, for example. Yeah. So um and and so many people so many doctors would recommend don't run if you're really overweight but you can definitely get on a bike or on a rower um yeah. and 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 it's true but you know it does not come for free in a way you know bad technique can definitely have uh, uh detrimental effects on on other body parts even if it's easier on the knees um and i guess of course good technique is also very important for longevity of the athlete i remember um, in one of our um, previous conversations, uh, you actually mentioned uh, that um, the average uh, age of uh, Olympic gold medalists are is actually pretty high. Yeah. In comparison to other sports, which means that rowers kind of peak their uh, their careers a little bit later than other sports would. Yeah, uh, we we have uh, a bunch of studies that show how the VO2 max is actually achieved uh, early in the age, and uh, um, and we actually can see in other sports like cycling they have a similar uh, base uh, into uh, uh, long distance uh, training uh, that you know. Um, younger and younger athletes are achieving results nowadays but the most successful one uh, seems to be still quite uh, um, later in life i had the fortune of working uh, on knowing uh, this uh, uh, great uh, athlete from italy and uh, he was able to um uh, to be competitive at 40. um you know, and uh, he had, you know, of course, uh, when you uh, put your body under stress so much, uh, you always have some uh, uh, pains and aches. But, uh, you know, being able to uh, be one of the world class athletes at 40, uh, it's not the average age of a medals is over 28 years old. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm, I'm Bulgarian. Rumiana Neko is one of our highly, you know, highest decorated uh, rowers. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she also competed uh, pretty, pretty late, uh, uh, yeah. to, to, and she had a very, very long and great career. So I, I, I could definitely guess that a good technique or maintenance of good technique is is gonna allow a longevity um, of, of of a, a kind of 
high, highly competitive career. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and that's why Master Rowan is so uh, dominant right nowadays. There are so many uh, athletes that, you know, past uh, their prime, uh, uh, they still want to compete and uh, they do it successfully with incredible results uh despite their age uh, it is uh, is extremely important uh, you know uh, to avoid uh, you know and, and the weak point in rowing is uh, mostly the the lower back uh, lumbar four and five are you know the uh the, the two uh, uh culprit of the most uh, the, um important injuries that we can get in growing yeah okay. well then uh that kind of uh you know brings to the next question then of course uh if as somebody that wants to get there as soon as possible like how long does it take or how difficult it is to develop a good technique and how of course uh if you're somebody with eager for results they go like okay how long would it take <laughs> uh, no um age and uh um let's say there is a, an x factor you know uh that i never be able to identify uh there are people that uh are extremely uh talented athletes you put them in a rowing machine they look like they are completely fish out of water they can yeah. put together strokes not, not even uh, you know to save their lives uh, there are other people that never had uh, experience in sports. You put them there, it seems like they never done anything before, uh, but that uh, for, uh, and, uh, and um, so there is that. And uh, also, you know, when you start younger, obviously it's much easier. Then uh, if we are talking about, uh, you know, uh, I wanna, just uh, find a way to exercise that is uh, healthy and uh, mm, takes very little time uh, out of my day and i just gonna wanna work on my rowing machine uh, it's one thing that if you want to be in the boat and uh, row in the boat that take uh, a lot longer because uh, there is uh, the balance factor there um you know, so, you know, we need to define what we are looking for first. Mm -hmm. um, on the rowing machine, I think uh, a person can start uh, um, uh, exercise uh, vigorously, maybe in, uh, uh, depending on how frequently exercise, uh, about if you do two, three times a week, uh, in a matter of three or four months, so you can start really uh, pushing yourself uh, uh, if you have a good coach. Um, uh, if you are, uh, you know, uh, instead uh, somebody that is looking for uh, a much higher level of performance, uh, let's say uh, you want to compete in some uh, international level competition on the rowing machine, uh, uh, we we're talking about uh, unless you are extremely talented that uh, you know you come already from uh, a sport that where uh, you know there are similar or complementary skills that can help you out. Uh, I would say two or three years. Uh, it's a minimum that you know. Of course, depending level, category, yeah, etc. Uh, two, three years on the rowing machine, uh, you can be um, probably, if you have the talent, uh, uh, um, be competitive. Let's say, uh, then uh, you know, again. And of course, for just just for fitness, I I can definitely see how a couple, yeah, couple yeah. of cues and guidance of like a correct uh, sequence of motion should should give you a pretty good basic that you can, as you said, uh, train for health and for fitness for, uh, you know, uh, safely and without being worried of, uh, of some... Um, if we are thinking about rowing for in a boat, uh, we, are, we are talking about years. Uh, before somebody can consider himself uh, uh, 
if we are talking about scaling that is uh, rolling with two oars uh, um, and uh, in your own boat, uh, four or five years uh, uh, of experience uh, in the single is what I think is necessary to become uh, uh, proficient uh, or start by understanding. the answer to your question. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and uh, instead in uh, um, instead in uh, in a sweet boat it can be a little bit less uh, you know again uh, there are you know I had the pleasure to train athletes they start very late in their life and they became very successful in a matter of few years um, but uh, you know uh, we're talking about uh, a an uncommon situation where uh, I was able to uh, uh, put all their life into this effort, you know, and you know, uh, so and then uh, it was, as you said, there is definitely uh, kind of a little side note, but there is definitely a tendency of like older athletes or people a little bit later in their life to to kind of get really, really dedicated into sport. Maybe they had a uh, kind of a busy uh, life when they were younger, you know, taking care of career and family. And then a little bit later in life, they go like, okay, now I have time for myself and I can really do what I'm passionate for. And now yeah. they have the time and the finances and the motivation and the desire to actually just go and do it. So definitely master's level, um, not, as you said, not only from coming from the, the point of uh, being, um, you know, a former athlete that just continues to be active, but also for people that just uh, come um, from from no sports background whatsoever. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, but, uh, uh, yes, it's, so it is very, very clear that we have, uh, you know, of course, the, the emphasis on technique will be uh, much, much higher uh, when working with a beginner athlete. And if, if you, um, you know, as you said, that probably for the first uh, few months, at, maybe even longer uh the emphasis should be just on correct movement as you said the fluidity the motion uh and kind of getting very very comfortable in this um as a coach how would you take this from a beginner and when would you say it's the time when you have to start adding other other things other metrics talking about different uh, we spoke with you um, um, in, a, in, a, in a different call. We, we talked about how would you start looking into explosiveness, uh, you know, the different metabolic paths, uh, you know, endurance, strength, and so on. And how yeah. would you kind of throwing those things in the mix after the, te the basic technique is there? Um, I, you know, uh, this is my personal uh, choice. Uh, I find uh, that an informed athlete uh, most of the time uh, um, can be a, a better athlete. Um, there are some cases where uh, athletes uh, prefer just tell me what to do <laughs> and uh, don't, don't bother me with the details. Mm -hmm. Uh, and because they can create the confusion, they can create doubts, uh, and that can influence the performance. Um, but um, generally speaking, we're talking about uh, 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 people that start rowing later in life, uh, and uh, they will like to know, they're curious, they will like. So, in that case, uh, you can uh, explain uh, them uh, some of these basic concepts, even uh, more complex one uh, from almost the beginning, you know, uh, um, and because that kind of can uh, start motivate them or better understand what you're trying to achieve. Or what uh, you're asking them to do as well, you know. Yeah. On, and what are you trying to, to, you know, why you are asking them to do what you, you know, exactly, kind of exactly, well the, exactly. The and, and I think, uh, you know, generally speaking, an athlete uh, can uh, uh, say, oh, okay, that's why you're uh, bugging me about this uh, aspect of, for example, uh, one of the most common thing is the ratio, that is this magic number that was invented by who knows who, uh, in uh, in the, history of rowing but where you should uh, um, 
have uh, a speed in the recovery that is twice as much as the speed that during uh, the drive uh, that is the phase where you actually pulling uh, uh, um, uh, on the or handle and uh, or that it's uh, let's say it's a teaching tool it's uh, in reality nobody keep their ratio not even uh, the best athletes uh, um, but they can give you that impression because they are uh, extremely uh, uh, skilled athletes uh, and uh, uh, it's important to teach it to uh, novices uh, or put that concept in their mind uh, because I find that it is very helpful for them to relax, uh, take time to learn uh, motion and think what's next. You know, um, uh, rowing, uh, it's not like running. That is something that you're born with. Uh, especially at the beginning, you are something that you have to think about it. What I had to do next. And you kind of like uh, had to leave uh, in rowing uh, like uh, a fraction of a second ahead of your time. <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, because by the time you actually execute the motion that you are looking to execute, uh, it's too late. <laughs> uh, so you have always to think a little bit to uh, a further ahead. Yeah. And, and uh, they, they call this uh, a, um, uh, unconscious competence. Yeah. When your your body is competent even without you actively engaging in your in the exactly. thinking of what is what is coming next. Definitely. But um, so yeah, the, the the magic ratio definitely we have seen and uh, and again I want to refer to to a conversation we had uh, some time back when you when you said to me that um, a, that an athlete uh, reaches very very um, you know soon really soon in their career they reach the maximum force they can actually produce in a drive no matter how fast or how you know how much effort they put into it and where you actually win competitions is in reducing the recovery this is where you win time to produce more power overall and yeah i guess this is this makes sense more for competitions uh but again for for teaching the two to one definitely makes sense and i think a lot of beginners really make these mistakes because they go and they watch let's say you know some like world championship or or um or an olympic uh, final and they see those very very powerful athlete rating at the rhythm of like 40 45 percent or higher and they go like maybe i should do that <laughs> and and that doesn't really yeah it, well. it's a it's a common mistake uh, uh, that it, it is uh, um uh, uh you know they don't uh, you know stroking uh, 40 42 44 strokes per minute or higher like uh, in a eight or a quad that where you reach over 44 strokes per minute sometimes uh um it, it requires a lot of skills because you not only have to do it, but you have to do it correctly, you know, um, and uh, trying to maintain the same length uh, of the stroke to be able to apply the same speed. And uh, what is really make a difference is the transition in and out of the water. As you said uh, just a few seconds ago, um, that power they can apply in uh, water is about the same. Uh, what you can improve uh, are, is the technique and the two most uh, delicate uh, phases of the stroke. that are the finish and the catch. The, the catch is when you put your blade in the water and the finish is when you take it out of the water. If you clean up those uh, two phases, and sounds uh, very simple. It's actually extremely complex. Uh, you actually improve uh, the most uh, your uh, efficiency as a rower. Yes. So <coughs> I, I bet that the, the, um, um, I can I can completely imagine how um, then there is like a little fine balance and like a little kind of going back and forth from working <laughs> nice and easy 
com almost completely on technique and then you kind of introduce a little bit of intensity and then the athlete's technique drops and then you have to go back and exactly. so on until until as you said because on the other side you can't just keep training technique till the till the end of time you have to start adding some intensity to the uh, yeah. to the program uh, and i bet there is like a lot of kind of going back and forth until as you said you have an extremely experienced athlete who would maintain good form regardless if it's 15 strokes per minute or 45 whether it's 2000 meter race or it's a marathon yeah, um, yeah. and they just, so, they're just super consistent we, we have to distinguish what is uh, uh you know rowing in a boat and what is rowing in a machine uh, a machine is uh, relatively easy uh because uh, you are on a stable platform uh, and uh, the motion is relatively uh simple uh yet still there are a lot of things that can go wrong if you don't uh, pay attention uh in a boat uh, you are um, consider yourself uh, you're like balancing yourself on a rope and uh, trying to explode uh, with all your power you have to apply about 70 to 80 kilos grams of power in matter of a fraction of a second uh, uh, sitting on top of a rope that is moving <laughs> you know yeah, and uh, swinging a little bit yeah. So uh, it, it, it requires a lot, a lot of practice. Um, there are, um, I can't remember who was uh, uh, that, uh, 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 that said that you require at least 5,000 reps uh, to uh, learn a, 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 a motion. Think about you have to learn the 5,000 reps for every single angle your bolt can be in a yeah. determined the the, or the what was it two or three thousand hours to learn a new skill yeah so, and, I mean, so we have uh, this motion in this direction and also we have a motion in this direction because the bolt uh, doesn't move only in uh, this or uh in one it's rotate almost uh, uh I think a lot of people, uh, a lot. I mean, I haven't been on a on a boat, and I'm really looking forward to do that after this whole crazy is is over. Yeah. Uh, but I think more, people, I lesson. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people rowing on a machine kind of underestimate the torque that you know, kind of the the, the yeah the this motion of the boat as you're propelling forward. And again, this is again this 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 uh, fake. Um, uh sense that the professionals created is just so easy it's like yeah, look, yeah. look at how 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 just smooth it doesn't move it's almost like they're on a slider um, yeah, yeah. and it's uh, yeah it's um a lot of people say oh it seems so easy you know it seems uh, like it didn't even try hard to pull and <laughs> these people are uh, rowing is uh, the most intense sport of all you know, there is no other sport where you achieve the same level of uh, heart rate and breathing rate uh, uh, than uh, in rowing. Uh, and uh, it, the level of lactic acids that you achieve for certain athletes, it's uh, uh, out of comprehension of most other sports. Uh, yeah. I think closest one would be probably um, uh, cross-country ski maybe uh you know cycling. and uh, some moments in cycling you know but uh, on the climbs on the climbs <laughs> I, I i guess but you know if you think about it in the climb it's never the end of it you know uh i, I would say probably at the end of a race when you're sprinting you probably can achieve uh, uh something similar um but because a climb uh, you know if you were going at that level you wouldn't be able to finish the race <laughs> definitely. Uh, definitely the amount uh, the amount of power and endurance that rowers produce is quite quite incredible and yeah. uh definitely i mean i i've actually watched uh, a few interesting um kind of um uh, uh, biomechanical research but uh, again rowers have the endurance of endurance athletes almost uh, you know, to kind of keep going for hours, but also have to be appreciated the fact that they almost have the power, uh, such as, for example, weightlifters would have.
Yeah. So, you know, weightlifters prepare for years to go into a three second or a five second lift. Yeah. Uh, and it, they exert a tremendous amount of power. It's definitely more than a rower would. But I'm saying, like, imagine this, take it at 80% and then apply it over like 20, 30, 40, 45 minutes, two hours. Yeah, there, um, is, a, there is actually, um, you know, a, a, a graph that was done. Um, about weightlifting, uh, comparing you know uh, different uh, athletes, uh, and uh, they show how you know usually there is uh, almost a linear curve that goes uh, you know the amount of reps and the weight that you uh, so where you have uh, uh, a, a, a for one rep you have the hundred percent of your uh, maximum weightlifting. And then you have uh, like a, a curve where you, when you go lower with the weight, you can do a few hundred reps, let's say. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, uh, you know, for weightlifter is almost uh, a, a straight line at some point. Uh, but rowers actually can, uh, uh, around their 70%, uh, they can, uh, they raise that peak of power where, where they can do, an incredible amount of reps for uh, uh, way out of proportions. Uh, yeah, like 70-80% yeah. um, uh, yeah. max force production. Yeah, that's, that is, that has always been like, yeah, mind-numbing. And again, um, yeah, unless you have tried it, you can't understand. And, and as you said, like the buildup of lactic acid, it, it's like no other. And I always, um, uh, joke uh, with uh, with friends uh, that uh, that row and they say and I said I bet it's like sitting in an acid bath at some yeah, point and, and and they joke uh, with me and they said um, I mean of course within the realm of uh, of of, uh, of a joke but uh, they always say um, uh, rowing is not about who can row. Uh, um, you know better, but who can endure more pain? You yeah, know, who's ready yeah. to endure more pain? Um, you know, within 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 one competition. So the grind um, is definitely there, and I don't think it gets any better. Um, another joke that they say about cycling, and I think rowing is like this. They say it never it never becomes easier. You just get faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. always gonna suck, and it's always gonna hurt. You're just gonna get faster. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Perfect. Um, so yeah, um, we kind of mentioned a little bit, like uh, you know, the ratio and the golden ratio. Um, and um, uh, of course, there are all a, a lot of other metrics that uh, you know one could look. Uh, except, um, uh, of course, what we see, for example, on the ERG, um, you know, uh, force curve, calories burned, uh, watts the, of power produced, and so on. Um, but of course, we have some kinematics metrics, such as um, you know the, the the maximum velocities of the handle or the the oars in the case of a boat, the seat maximum velocity, and it, it, in a sense, like how how the the the, um, uh, the athlete moves in a sense of kinematics. So when would you start as a coach? When would you start introducing those? Uh, I said the kinematic parts and the I said the velocities, the rhythm. Uh, to the athlete and some of the basic kinetics such as the ideal, you know, force curve, uh, the watts, the splits, and all those kind of things. The, the, the first curve, uh, um, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, alpha. it's something that I read, introduced relatively early, um, not at the beginning, but, you know, uh, uh, I would say as soon as the athlete has the general motion in it, uh, having an idea of what the frogs curve should look like helps them to develop a certain fluidity in the, uh, especially if the athletes are to train by themselves, but it doesn't have, I don't know, the opportunity to be able to get some feedback by uh, way of a mirror or a, a video camera uh, um, looking at the force curve uh, kind of like generally speaking help you out uh, to be a little bit smoother in your motion mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, 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 there are other things you know for example uh, I use the force curve uh, um, 
associated with video uh, when uh, I had to explain some uh, issues that there are, you know, in some part of the force curve um, that the uh, athlete can uh, better understand. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, the power dropped too quickly or uh, during uh, the stroke, uh, usually has to do with some part of the chain that doesn't connect properly. And uh, uh, so you can identify that uh, during uh, the force curve and also during uh, uh, the video uh, by comparing them one to each other. And, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, and I think, you know, it, it is a part of the coach experience uh, to learn uh, how to uh, yeah. uh, how to uh, introduce this, and uh, it varies, of course, with the athlete. There are people that are usually athletes that they are have an experience in sport, uh, so they have a big background that they would like to know that much more sooner than uh, athletes uh, that um generally speaking i'm just learning and uh, now having that a previous experience in sport uh, and uh, you know and it's always useful to have a comparison with other type of sports you know uh that uh, although you know it, it's very unique uh, rowing compared with other sports uh, because uh, of the motion backward <laughs> uh, and uh it makes it sometimes that's what confuse uh, the athletes. Although in the org is not as much because there is not that concept of going backward or forward. Uh, it's yeah. more like uh, 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 related to the, the the personal, just the exercise itself. Yeah, just just the motion of itself. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and of course. Uh, um, you know, a good coach could probably see a lot of things from the force curve and inclusive of your styles. And we have had a look. Um, I know that, for example, uh, for athletes that kind of open their hips a little bit. And um, I'm not quite sure which style was that, uh, but they basically engage a little bit of their trunk and their legs at the beginning. The force curve kind of heaps a little bit and then kind of slows down while for styles where they engage the legs and then the trunk and then the arms it's a little bit more like a bell curve uh more like it uh, actually uh the front part has more to do with the uh, uh with the um with the uh, uh ability of the athlete to apply the pressure at the right time uh, rather than the technique they use okay. um, um the adams technique uh, that is the one where you try to open uh, the uh, body and the legs at the same ten times. That's most commonly referred to, although there are many different variations. Uh, it, it tends to have uh, a peak power higher in the center where when you have both the chains of the back and the legs opening at the same time so you have the hips swinging the body swinging and the legs opening so you create a, a higher peak curve but the curve is uh, narrower generally speaking yeah. uh instead um the um uh we, we in italy we call it russian technique uh, uh, where you have uh, an emphasis on the use of the legs, back, and arms, uh, you tend to have uh, a, a curve that is a little bit longer. So you're applying uh, the curve for a longer time. Uh, it doesn't have that sharp peak in the center, and it's a little bit flatter on the top, uh, but it, uh, the area can be comparable. Yeah. Uh, and, again, and again, I think for, for beginners, most importantly is to, for the, the force curve, not to have a hump, as they call it, which is clear indication of losing of the, uh, of the um, kinetic chain. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you want, you want that to be as smooth as possible, or avoiding uh, uh, drops in uh in that curve before that that means that at some point you one of the main key 
of your chain uh, uh, stopped. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, definitely. Such as, as they they call this uh, this uh, this fault like the, the bum shoving yeah. when when the chain you know the, the the handle is traveling right. and then the hips open but it's not moving and then it's like this. It's yeah, the bum shoving is usually at the catch when you actually are shooting your butt, as we say here in the yeah. United States, uh, uh, where uh, your legs are pushing, but your shoulder give up uh, because usually there is not enough uh, strength in the lower back. And uh, uh, and so the shoulder pretty much stay where they are, but the uh, butt is moving backward. And, and I can imagine this is extremely dangerous to actually compensate just purely from kind of a uh, uh, let's say it, it it can be dangerous uh, but of the mistakes this is the less dangerous uh, uh the 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 more uh in my opinion and i think there are researches on this matter that prove me right but uh, uh the opening of the back too soon uh, is create that compression on the lower back that kind of create uh, the problems on the lower back especially if uh, there is no a correct position of uh, your uh, uh, lower back so the, uh, yeah. if your spina is not supported properly uh, you kind of start having the vertebras uh, where they push on top of each other in the wrong place uh, um, if we increase, uh, we talk about sweep rowing, there is also a torsion <laughs> there. Yep. And that's when things go south pretty uh, yes. yeah. very quickly. Well, that actually brings me to 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 my uh, you know to my to my last question for today. Um, in in a case that you do not have your beginner and you don't have the chance to be part of a club or uh, or kind of work with a coach. Um, what would you say is the most important that uh, thing that people should look like? What should they? How they should should they approach their training uh, and kind of uh, yeah um, technique and just uh, training program in general? So in general, I would say the best thing is uh, um, trying to. There are there are with the internet now. There are a lot of resources available for everybody um constitute as a lot of videos that you can uh, look it up about technique uh, and uh, um, how to better uh, implement um you know you can use uh, videos uh, video cameras uh, and computers sometimes you can put your laptop and you can look yourself in the laptop right beside your machine uh, or uh, uh, a mirror even that can be uh, useful um, uh, and uh, compare that with uh, uh, maybe the force curve that you're applying you can get some uh, immediate feedback uh, along we said do not watch the world championship finals and compare yourself to this <laughs> yeah no I will I would say, you know, watch, there are some video on YouTube about uh, uh, people on the rowing machine uh, doing some uh, low steady state uh, that you can actually um, compare yourself to and uh, uh, be, uh, uh, use that as an example. And you mentioned a little bit, but just to go very, uh, very quickly over it again, uh, what would you say are the faults that beginners should look uh, out for uh, as they row? And if they, let's say that they, they, they really, they track themselves, they, they, they take videos, they observe it, what should they be looking for? And if they see themselves doing it, they should say, okay, stop, I have to fix this. You but, know? Let's say um, that the, the, there is a, something that is called the perceived effort, um, you know the tendency normal human tendency is uh, that we try to use the upper body more than the lower body uh, simply because uh, our upper body is generally speaking much less strong than the lower body so we feel like if we 
muscle up with your our upper body so we break our arms and we lift with our back we are actually making a bigger effort and uh, uh, that's a mistake that can be costly as I, I said before if the posture is not correct so we kind of like hench over um, we either have uh, an excessive uh, lordosis or kyphosis of uh, our uh, spina um, we, we we can do a serious damage to our back that's the generally speaking uh, the, 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 the 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 most debilitating type of injury you can get in rowing uh, there are issues with shoulders but generally speaking my experience is they are not as common uh, on the rowing machine um uh but uh the breaking of the arms so pulling too early and breaking the arms uh, those are the 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 two more important uh, mistakes that you can do and this is uh, like um, the results of our effort of uh, trying to pull harder yeah so taking a step back uh, try to work focusing on the sequence uh, uh, where we, you have a nice uh, continuous and smooth transition between the use of the legs, back and arms. When you see high level athletes, okay, they can do that transition in a matter of fraction of a second uh, before the legs are completely uh, uh, finished, their backs are already engaged and before the back is completely finished their arms are also engaged and we have a moment where we send this uh, um, on the machines uh, we actually have a, a noise feedback uh, where we can hear the fan goes boom and uh, that's we kind of have an idea that we are doing something right yeah. if uh, the noise uh, die right away quickly means that we didn't do an acceleration uh, uh, properly True. and so that's uh, yeah. that's uh, uh, something that every novice uh, can uh, uh, can uh, uh, use uh, as a feedback uh, but generally speaking uh, i would say the two main uh, things to do is uh, try to think too much to muscle up the the stroke by breaking the arms and lifting the back of the catch and that's uh, particularly easy with a machine that is not you know it's not like in the water because in the water you put the blade in the water and you feel right away if you're connected or not yeah. Instead, uh, in the rowing machine, there is a moment where you stretch the chain and the wheels start catching up. Yeah, we talked about like engaging with a clutch and kind of applying that force to to bite into the in in, in the chain. Um, yeah, definitely. Perfect. Yeah. Well, all right. Thanks so much. It was really really nice, and I'm sure we're gonna do another uh, talk at some point. But uh, it's been super super helpful, and I hope this is uh, this is something for you know, some of our beginner kind of uh, athletes or people that kind of want to get better to, to take in consideration. Um, and again, yes, and I think it's a, just a general advice, mm -hmm. even if you're rowing at home. Uh, mm -hmm. I know a lot of coaches will be very, very happy to kind of do a little assessment of, uh, of, the, of your video for technique and just, um, just as we always say, just make sure you, keep, you stay safe so you can keep practicing sport for a long time and yeah, just stay healthy. That's yeah, that's the most important thing. We're doing this to get better, not to get worse. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Great way of putting it up. All right. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.